Imagine a world where robots are all around us, interacting with us, helping us, accompanying us. A world where robots are not remotely controlled by humans. They sustain themselves autonomously, on their own, using the latest machine learning and artificial intelligence. That's what scientists like Dr. Aaron Ames at Caltech in Pasadena are working towards. Dr. Ames is part of the team at the Center for Autonomous Systems and Technologies, known as CAST. Dr. Ames and his fellow researchers are developing ways to get robots to partner with humans for a more sustainable future, where humans are not just self-reliant. For example, what if you could have a robot take care of your aging parents who have health problems and to live alone? What if you could use robots for emergency responding in large urban cities or at natural disasters like forest fires or hurricanes so you don't endanger the lives of rescuers? What if you could have a robotic prosthetic that works on its own if you're an amputee? Or what if you're simply a couch potato and want a robot to do all of your shopping for you? Dr. Ames says this is the brave new world of sustainability. This is Cassie. The, the hope is on this robot to test autonomous related concepts. When you say autonomy, I mean, you're kind of saying this thing is going to have its own brain and work on its own? That's right. It's all of engineering in one package. Uh, you have to think about how it's designed mechanically, how the linkages come together to get the kind of behavior you want. You have motors, right? Those motors have to be controlled by processors, which then have to be controlled by other processors. So you have mathematics, algorithms, computer science, electrical engineering, driving all the motors. It's gonna be able to make its own decisions. So we have to understand what that means by decisions though. You know, we don't mean that it's gonna decide whether to shop or not, or whether to, you know, buy shoes from Amazon or not. We mean just local decisions about how will it go forward? How does it handle the terrain that it's walking on, right? You have robots that can do repetitive tasks very well, but have difficulty with unstructured things. You have artificial intelligence that can deal with structured things very well, like chess and go. How do we bring this together? So how do we take capable bodies like this and put capable minds on them. And importantly, how do we have those minds be able to reason in unstructured and uncertain environments? And it's that that will be the key to autonomy down the line. With that said, is this key to autonomy that Dr. Ames refers to truly sustainable for humans? Most engineers would agree that yes, jobs are going to get lost because of artificial intelligence, because of robots. Dr. Oshande Oshaba is an electrical engineer and professor at the nonprofit, nonpartisan RAND Corporation. Dr. Oshaba specializes in the study of machine learning algorithms. He's conducting research on how artificial intelligence will impact the future of jobs, including what occupations are most vulnerable to automation. If you're thinking about sustainability, Precisely, we'd be thinking about things like the welfare benefits going forward. If jobs are getting lost, if workers don't have stable income, if they're working precarious jobs from now going forward because of artificial intelligence, how does that affect the ability to pay into their retirement benefits account? How does that affect the ability of states to fund their liability, their pension liabilities? That is not something that has been given as much thought, that's as clear, and we need to think about that because that's a sustainability issue. We're going to have to deal with that going into the future. For decades, machine learning and artificial intelligence have been a double-edged sword. Critics have argued about the cost-benefit, claiming there's a price to pay with advances in technology, in this case, robots. Does the benefit of having AI all around us offset, in this case, the loss of employment for various sectors of our population? Well, scientists like Dr. Anima Anand Kumar believe robots are inevitably going to help sustain our world for future generations. I design the brains behind the robots here at CAST. Anant Kumar is a computer science professor at Caltech and specializes in artificial intelligence and machine learning. She helps program Cassie and she is confident that Cassie will eventually have the ability to sustain herself without human help and thus help sustain humans in the process. For me, like artificial intelligence and machine learning, is asking how we can take in all the data of the world and create knowledge. That knowledge could eventually sustain Cassie with her own brain. Scientists are working towards a day when they won't have to program specific instructions. With improved processors and sensors, robots like Cassie will be able to take information from their environment and learn how to adapt and react on their own. Full autonomy is indeed a challenge, right? So that's why we don't aim for full autonomy right in the beginning. What we do is, can we augment human and manual control with uh, AI? So in the beginning, the AI system is 
you know, observing what the humans are doing, how they're controlling, and over time, hopefully, it learns better and better. Dr. Oshaba says that as robots do learn better and better, it can be scary, particularly for people living paycheck to paycheck, who fear they'll be replaced by robots in the future. There are fewer workers working stable jobs long term. It means workers have to be more flexible, have to be retrained continuously through their working lives. That is going to Im impose a cost on the state, on the state welfare system. So you need a form of scaffolding to make sure that people who are switching are not being left behind. Uh, you need them, you need a way to support people who have no income in the short term and to help them get into, f into paying jobs in the long term. So if you want a sustainable labor, labor market, you make sure that people are being retrained flexibly to switch between, between jobs as they will have to do in the future. Basically, if you want a sustainable world, it's less about holding back the potential of artificial intelligence and more about creating sustainable regulations and policy to scaffold people as they go into this brave new world. Oshaba says that in the final analysis, humans should not be alarmed with this new sustainability world of machine learning and artificial intelligence. It's not the first time we've had technology change. Technology change doesn't always, doesn't necessarily lead to job loss. Historically, we've actually had gains due to our technology change. There's going to be job churn. For example, there are going to be losses due to um, machine learning algorithms, robots taking over, say, cleaning jobs, say, um, safety, well, manufacturing jobs. But then you also have whole swaths of jobs that didn't exist before. So think about an algorithm scientist, uh, uh, an Uber driver, a Lyft driver, task rabbit. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. It seriously freaks me out, though. What is that? I don't know. It's just because it's something that's not human. I don't really have to guide her. I mean, she's yeah. practically walking herself. She wants herself. to pull away from you, right? Well, that's the yeah, thing. That's right. It's as if she has a mind of her own yeah. and she's walking on her own. That's right. And that's kind of freaky. It is kind of freaky.